positions as a place where they go to make money. Hopefully one day that will happen. Gentlemen, before I get your thoughts, let me show you what um, Senator Johnson Sakaja had to say earlier this week at the Senate proceedings on this same issue of how we should be protecting our small traders. Take a listen. The traders and importers in Nairobi are still going through a lot of hard times, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this market has been infiltrated, first of all, um, by the Chinese, and I will say it, I know I should not mention uh, friendly countries, but they are competing even with our hawkers, Mr. Speaker. They have their go-downs, which are opening at 3 a.m., and they are front people um, to, 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 to provide goods at lower prices. Mr. Speaker, many of the goods and the fight against counterfeit is not the fight against our people. It's a fight, it's a fight against goods that can actually harm um, the environment and the health of people. That should not be a fight against people. But you find these uh, um, implementers, or can I say um, anti-counterfeit officers, confiscating goods and selling these goods um, in shops just down the road from uh, these, these traders. Mr. Speaker, this has to, to stop. And I'm glad that uh, even yesterday the president noted, and he was even too embarrassed to read his speech, because the SME sector, the small traders and small businessmen, just because they may not be wearing suits and ties and don't come to the table like Kepsa and Kenya Association of Manufacturers, are really ignored despite the fact that they produce a, close to 80% of the GDP when it comes to trade, Mr. Speaker. We need to treat them better. We need to be able to provide better subsidies for what they produce. We need to make sure that we implement a Buy Kenya policy to ensure that even these people who are manufacturing, manufacturers are not just the big people in the area. Some of the best furniture you will get, Mr. Speaker, is along uh, Gikomba or along Gong Road, Mr. Speaker. We need to find a way in which to build these people. All right, so that's Johnson Sakaja, Senator to Nairobi. Bichachi, your thoughts on what he said, protecting small traders. And then at some point we were singing, Buy Kenya, Grow Kenya. I think that song just died out. Uh, well, the song died out because as Kenyans, we don't take ourselves quite seriously as, as a nation. Uh, first, let's, let, let me deal with the question of debt. The question of debt is, is, is an interesting question because debt is an okay thing until you apply it in the uniquely African and therefore Kenyan situation. The reason why Africa in general has embraced Chinese debt is because the Chinese will invest in whatever it is you want without due regard to whether it's corrupt, to, uh, to whether you uh, employ uh, uh, ethical values in your country. And that's a big difference between borrowing from the West and from the Chinese. But in return, what the Chinese do is they flood your market not only with cheap products, but they also flood your market with cheap Chinese people. Very key word, cheap Chinese people. They bring you the Chinese people who will call you monkeys to your face in your own country. They bring you Chinese people who will roast maize in competition with Mamamboga in your own country. They bring you Chinese people who are willing to be hawkers. They'll bring you Chinese people who want to be tour guides of your own country. It is like me going to Mutambo's bedroom and telling him where his bed is better than himself. This is what we purport to do in Africa. Where How can, how can a Chinese person come to Africa? to tell us where our hills and our mountains are. But the reason for that is simple, that it is almost as if in Africa, and I've traveled to many African countries, that what happens is with the, together with a Chinese road, you get Chinese people coming into your country, not to bring in expertise, but to begin to compete with your own local population in on a very unfair scale. Do you think we'll get to the point of um, Sri Lanka, no, not Sri Lanka rather, but with Zambia? Uh, the, the point of Zambia we might not get to, and the reason we might not get to it is because of the population. But we might get to it if we continue, if our leaders continue to do what they do. I, I, I wrote an article and I said it was shameful for a nation such as Kenya, for our CS of transport, to launch a tunnel upon which all the writings on the tunnel were in Chinese. To this day, I don't know the name of that tunnel because the writing was in Chinese. I'm assuming it must be some Sufuria clanging saying ling ping ping pong pong pong. You know, that is how it is named because that is what was written there. So we need to fix those things. Our leaders, look at the building in town, the parliament building, then branding on that building as it's being built is in Chinese. So we, we are slowly by slowly being assimilated related into Chinese culture. So we need to watch out. But the worst part is this, that because of our corruption, and this is the problem with this country, and I'll tie it into the Wario story, the reason why Kenyans should be upset is in this country, after we steal your money, 
what we do is we make sure our wives and children the next day are on Instagram wearing the uniforms of our runners. That is what happens in this country. That we take money from the public and then we showcase it to our faces that we've misused it, misspent it and done the wrong thing with it. Honorable Mutambo, I'll ask you the exact same question we're asking our audience today. Do you think, and having been a member of parliament, do you think that Kenya can honestly do without loans from China? I'll paraphrase that question. Can we manage debts in Kenya? Mm -hmm. That's a simple thing. Can we manage debts? And the, pro the answer is no, we cannot manage the debts. To live with or without the debt, debts are all over. And to borrow is not a bad thing, like a lawyer has said. But the problem is we are borrowing in a wrong manner. Number two, uh, I would say that, and I want Kenyans to hear me, we do not need investors in this country. We need innovators in this country. If you get info, info, uh, people can do or invest more in innovation in this country, we'll do better. And I know that can be done. We, we, we said it the other time I, I was seated here. But let me come back now to your question and address it in a proper manner. <clears throat> the reason why we are borrowing, it is because we are not managing our resources. And we are drilling so much on how much we are borrowing. We are drilling so much on how, too much, I mean, we are spending too much time on how much the church is stole in NYS, <laughs> which is only a billion shillings. And we are not asking ourselves, how much are we losing on the other end? What am I saying? I would want Kenyans to.